up and you build your core position as long as the high pivot stays intact. That is still intact. The bigger time frames tell us we're going down further. We just had to get some bulls back on board. You had to convince people that, hey, this is another buy the dip opportunity. Bitcoin is crashing, but don't panic. In this video, I'll use the charts to explain what's happening and what to do next. We'll break down Bitcoin's resistance levels and how they're impacting the price. We'll also look at the overall trend and why it's still bearish. Finally, I'll give you my trading strategy for the current market conditions. So if you're wondering what to do with your Bitcoin, stick around for this video. I'll give you the insights you need to make informed trading decisions. Subscribe to my channel to stay ahead of the curve in the volatile crypto market. And let's get started. Bitcoin is falling a little bit today on the charts as we flip over to that. The only thing I want to kind of bring your attention to here is still the chart. The chart is everything. So on a short term basis, let's analyze this. All right. So Bitcoin has a resistance line right in here from this previous top. We pierced it. That's resistance number one. Resistance number two is right up here, which coincides with this area and then resistance number three. As it comes down, ideally you want to you want to see a daily close within these lows. Right now we're below that, but we want to see where today closes. If it closes below, it doesn't make it fully negative, but it does hurt the bull pattern a little bit. This pattern then would no longer be valid, but you're still above this down sloping trend line here. So what you're doing here and this is might be a little bit complex, but essentially it adjusts the odds. So imagine when you're in this range, if the odds of a move up are probably, let's say, 80%, okay? Now, that's pretty heavily favoring the upside. If we close below this line, but we still remain above this downsloping trend line, the odds probably adjust to 65% probability that it's up. If you break this line, all of a sudden, the odds of up go below 50% to, let's say, 30% upside. So do you see how at each level as a trader, it's not, there's no, there's no like it's 100% this or 100% that. It's literally like the adjustment of odds. But essentially what you have guys is that every candle you get is like you're flipping over a card in poker and it will adjust your probabilities to what the next move is. And that is the essence of it. By the way, remember gold? Yesterday, we talked about gold, and I said gold could go up a little bit more until it gets to this trend line. Well, look at where we find gold today. So, so one of the things that I've noticed, and this is something I want to bring to your attention, is look at the sell-off in gold, and then look at the reflex bounce. So number one, the sharper something sells off, the sharper it bounces. That's just the nature of the beast, right? If you basically are in a scenario where a stock drops like this, it'll have a retrace like that. If a stock goes like this, what do you think the bounce is going to be? the bounce is going to be like this, right? A much smaller bounce. So I actually prefer this pattern formation. I prefer the much sharper bounces because you uh, drops because you'll get bigger bounces to them. This type of drop on gold is basically a flush out. And this happens before bigger moves. So when I see this, and let me erase these lines, but basically when I see this, to me, this is probably the last big flush out on gold before we eventually break up. Now, I still think that again, and I, I showed you guys this before, right? This pivot low to this pivot low, that's your target. And that's probably where we're gonna have short-term resistance. But this is very short-term. This will probably go like this, and then it's gonna break up like that. Now, again, this is the final flush out. It's the nastiest flush, many down, down days in a row. You can't tell you how many people were saying, oh my gosh, Gareth, what's happening to gold? Oh my goodness. Well, I, and what did I say in these game plans? Don't worry, it's still into support. As long as support holds, it holds. And again, it's about not panicking, not letting that emotion get the better of you. As soon as emotion gets control of you, you're good. You're done. The market great white sharks, the sharks out there will smell that blood, that emotion, which is the blood to them, and they will eat you alive. You can't, you have to go by the charts. It's the only non-biased thing you have. Everything else, what I think, what I feel, what my heart says, what I really want, you know, that's that market doesn't care about that, right? Right, because even though you've had a nasty sell on gold, what is the chart telling us? Well, you got this major support here and you're still within a beautiful channel to the downside right there. So the chart is holding. All right, so anyways, that's again, just an amazing lesson to behold, guys. 
Remember, just last week, I started going bullish on the stock market. I said, guys, it's looking like we're going to get a bounce. If we flip over to the SPY, the chart on the SPY was telling us just that. I've kind of simplified it here, but just to rehash, we have this major level right across here, right? We talked about that. We had our parallel lines. We came right down to it. Look at what the S&P has done here. It has rallied back. Now, the important thing on this chart and why I've simplified it and gotten rid of those other lines is because what I want to do is I'm focusing in on this pattern. Look at yesterday. We saw yesterday that this beautiful head and shoulders, the market had broken, which means it triggered. Head and shoulders trigger when the neckline, this yellow line is the neckline. It connects basically through the armpit right here. That's how you create a neckline in a head and shoulders pattern. It broke. Yesterday, we pierced the line to negate a time frame is still bearish. Lower highs, lower lows, that is still intact. The bigger time frames tell us we're going down further. We just had to get some bulls back on board. You had to convince people that, hey, this is another buy the dip opportunity. Run right into it. That's what we need for the markets to be able to roll over because those people will have to sell, right? And that creates downward pressure. Okay, so ultimately, what am I going to do here? As we rally up, I'm going to begin to short the market. We're going to continue to take positions off the table. All right, if you looked at Dollar General yesterday, that rallied. I highly that. Square, we'll go to that chart in just one second. Disney's continued to be a, a monster. All of these charts have been rallying up, which is awesome. But again, I'm a swing trader. So as we get up towards these upper levels that I dissected somewhere in this vicinity, I'm going to begin to short the market again. This is what it is, swinging. Swing trading is like a dance. You're dancing one way, you're dancing the other. I'm not going to dance much more than that because I don't want to embarrass myself. But the key is this, right? You have to be able to maneuver and see what the charts are telling you. You're not always going to be right. Is it possible I short here and we go all the way up here? Of course it is. But the key is it's position size. You start inching in here. You inch a little bit more on the way up and you build your core position as long as the high pivot stays intact. That is still intact. The bigger time frames tell us we're going down further. We just had to get some bulls back on board. You had to convince people that, hey, this is another buy the dip opportunity. Run right into it. That's what we need for the markets to be able to roll over because those people will have to sell, right? And that creates downward pressure. Okay. So ultimately, what am I going to do here? As we rally up, I'm going to begin to short the market. We're going to continue to take positions off the table. All right, if you looked at Dollar General yesterday, that rallied. I highly bet. Square, we'll go to that chart in just one second. Disney's continued to be a, a monster. All of these charts have been rallying up, which is awesome. But again, I'm a swing trader. So as we get up towards these upper levels that I dissected somewhere in this vicinity, I'm going to begin to short the market again. No, this yeah. is what it is, swinging. Swing trading is like a dance. You're dancing one way, you're dancing the other. I'm not going to dance much more than that because I don't want to embarrass myself. But the key is this, right? You have to be able to maneuver and see what the no, charts yeah. are telling you. You're not always going to be right. Is it possible I short here and we go all the way up here? Of course it is. But the key is its position size. You start inching in here, you inch a little bit more on the way up, and you build your core position as long as the high pivot stays intact.